Hey guys, how are you? Andrew is cool here with another video. Um, I'm very sorry that I haven't posted many videos of late on my YouTube account. Not that most people probably watch them anymore, to be honest. Um, I've been posting videos mostly now on my Facebook page because I have a bigger audience there. And um, I have the audience that I'm trying to target when it comes to programming. Uh, a lot of my subscribers were probably back from the day when I made a Milo video or when I showed people how to get a bot and guitar hero or change the language on The Sims or just like little videos like that and cover videos and stuff but the, the target the audience that I'm now trying to target is programming um, and all the rest of it so I've been mostly posting videos on my Facebook page which I'll leave a link in the description if you do want to check it out and if you want to like it too much appreciated indeed uh, I've been using that service because it, it, it is targeting the audience that I want to sort of target my content at and all the rest of it so um, without any further ado, uh, recently I upgraded to the latest Windows 10. Now, I shouldn't say recently, but I upgraded to Windows 10 probably a year ago uh, when it first came out before the anniversary update. And look, it, Windows 10 was really fine and it was it was nice indeed, but I just found that like um, it was quite sluggish and not to mention the computer always sounded like a race car wanting to take off at the green light as soon as I said go. So like the fan was always r like running really like loudly and stuff like that so I put the computer apart and I applied new thermal paste and dusted it out and I thought that would help but look it honestly didn't do much at all and I just found the computer really sluggish so I ran hardware tests on it and all the hardware was fine from all the tests that I ran so what it came down to is I thought okay well it must be a Windows 10 problem perhaps a driver issue so I went back to Windows 7 professional and straight away I noticed that the performance was really really like a lot more quicker than Windows 10 now I know you can argue the fact well hey Windows 7 is super super old and you know, times have changed and the computers now require a bit more oomph to run the latest operating system, but I'm still running a Core i5 um, 2.5 gigahertz processor with a turbo speed of 3.2 I think it is, or something like that. So I didn't really think that the hardware was too much of an issue for running Windows 10. I did know, that I didn't understand that there was going to be some stress on the hardware um, after installing Windows 10, but I didn't believe that it would be that much for the computer always running at 100% um, the fan speed, sorry, always running at 90% to 100%. I just thought, why? Um, so after installing Windows 7, I installed the drivers from Toshiba's website. And I noticed straight away that the graphics driver in the Windows 7, it was called the 5650 Mobile. However, in Windows 10, it's just the 5000 series. So I thought, oh, well, maybe it was the graphics driver that Microsoft sort of, what Microsoft forces you to use, I guess, from the beginning. And, um, I wouldn't say force, but it's just what they give you sort of by default. And hey, the graphics driver's installed, you know, why worry about, you know, using Toshiba's graphics driver that they recommend or ATI's one. So I thought that maybe that was an issue. And so I was using Windows 7 for probably the past month, two months at top, so I suppose. But then I'm a programmer, so I was using Visual Studio. And I had to, I had a, um, I've got a Raspberry Pi 2 here, yeah. And it's just been sitting on the shelf collecting dust and all the rest of it. And I thought, well, what a great chance to sort of, Let's make a program for it using Windows uh, Internet of Things and see what we can do with it. So I went, I downloaded the templates for Windows 10 Internet of Things for Visual Studio. And I knew that I wouldn't be able to make programs for the Windows App Store. Um, <laughs> whoop de doo big loss there. But um, I thought that I could always deploy a Windows 10 project to my Raspberry Pi or another Windows 10 computer on a system, on a network, sorry. And um, so I, I installed the Windows 10 Internet of Things and everything there said it was A-OK. -okay. And then when I opened up Visual Studio and opened up a new project for um, Internet of Things, it told me that it couldn't deploy to it and that I need to upgrade my computer to Windows 10 Anniversary. Um, so that really sucked. And so what I've done now is I just decided to go back to Windows 10. I thought, well, maybe there was just an issue with the first release of Windows 10. Um, perhaps in the Anniversary Edition, it may have fixed the problem where I was getting a high fan speed, okay? So I installed Windows 10 and everything like that, and once again, the fan was running at 100% all the time. Even on idle, just as I sit here recording this video, it would be running at 100%, and it's quite annoying. You know, there's, I don't want to be listening to a fan sort of revving, you know, in the red zone, if you know what I mean. Um, so I got on the Google, and I started Googling, why is the fan running 100%? Now, I'm not the only one with this issue. It seems that there's quite a few people on the net um, with the same issue that their computer was running at 100%, but in Windows 7, it wasn't. Um, so I tried forcing drivers, Windows 7 drivers actually, to my computer, and I was expecting it to blue screen, and sure enough, it did blue screen, which is probably to be expected. Um, so then I updated the original, um, I updated the drivers to 
the latest driver that um, ATI recommend, I did that and it still had the same problem. And in fact, I think it might have been even louder, to be honest. So I started digging more. And so what I did is I went here to the task manager and I went to performance. I had a look here and I thought, well, everything here looks normal. However, at the time, my disk zero was at 100%. It was at 100%, and it was even on idle, and it, was, it wasn't doing anything, okay? Now, I just installed Visual Studio at the time, so that was 50 gig. Thank you very much, Microsoft. And um, I thought, well, maybe Visual Studio is still doing something. I mean, to download 50 gig all in one go to install the Visual Studio software, I thought that maybe that was my issue. So I reset the computer a fair few times and all the rest of it, but it was always at 100%. So then I started Googling disk zero at 100% all the time. Um, now, bear in mind that people were writing like fixes, ways to fix the 100% fan speed. They were saying, well, you know, put your computer in economical mode and that'll fix the problem. It's not really a fix, you know, it's, it's just dimming the screen. And I take the computer outside quite a lot. So for me to have the screen like dimmed, it's kind of like looking at your telephone screen when you're in the sun. You know, it's difficult, you strain your eyes and you just look like an idiot. So what I decided to do was I, I dug into more with this disk zero problem and um, I found that there was quite a number of people complaining that their disk speed was always at 100%. Okay, so in this video, I know I've rambled on a little bit, but I just want to sort of give you the, the backbone of like how I found this fix and, and like how it works and all the rest of it and why it works. So let's have a look. So what we want to do is we want to go to our Windows key and press R and just type in services.msc, okay? So go onto there, and I'm gonna show you now what's going to happen when I activate the service, and then what happens when I deactivate the service. So as you can see now, the disk space goes up to 100%, but then it goes back down. This would always be at 100%, and it would also affect the computer's like speed and stuff, I guess, when writing and reading from the disk. Um, so let's scroll down here, and we're gonna find a service and it's called uh, Superfetch. Okay, and I've disabled it, so I'm just going to right click and go to properties here. And the description it gives you maintains and imp uh, improves system performance over time. Yeah, I don't have time, you know, I just want to get my work done now. Um, I'm sure it maybe does do something, but in my particular case and many others, it was definitely not improving the system's performance. So, first of all, let me just set it to what it's automatically at when you first get your Windows 10 installed. So I'm gonna click here, the system uh, startup type automatically. Okay, and now I'm gonna press start. So now we're starting the service. Okay, so the service has been started. Now let's take a look over here at the disk performance. And we can already see there that it's starting now to build and it's going up to 100%. Okay, look at that. It's now going up to 100%. Okay, now the fan hasn't kicked in yet, but I'm sure in time, I'll run the Toshiba uh, fan speed. And yes, I know this looks, <laughs> it looks very basic, but it, it gets results and that's what we're after. So right now we're at 61% and the CPU was at 45%. Okay, now I also, before doing this, I pulled the computer apart, I applied the thermal paste and I dusted it out, but I still, it was still the same issue, okay? So right here at 100%, I'm sure now if I was to reset the computer and turn it back on, the disk speed here would still be at 100% and the fan would probably be at 90. Now it was at 90 for like a couple of days because I just figured that maybe it was, oh sorry, not a couple of days, for like a couple of hours. I figured that maybe it would just sort itself out, but unfortunately it didn't. Now let's disable this um, service. So I'm gonna press here. I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna go start up type. I'm gonna go to disable, and now I'm gonna press stop. Okay, now let's take a look at the disk. And let's also take a look at this. Now this itself is even starting to go down. Um, but check that out, look at that disk space. Uh, not disk space, but that um, percentage time of the process, write and read request. As you can see, it's gone from 100, it's gone down to 10% to 15%. I do have Google open, Google Chrome open, and as we all know, Google is quite hungry on RAM. Um, but as you can see, it's not running anywhere near as where it was running before. So, I mean, that itself is an improvement. 
and I do believe that I, I <laughs> I've jinxed myself but I haven't been able to show you that it was running at 90% but do take my word for it otherwise I wouldn't be making this video um, my computer was at 90% on the fan speed and now it's at 68 and this is just bless honestly and I've got a few things open I'm recording and all the rest of it but I mean honestly this is blessed having it at this speed um, look at that just turn off completely then but this is honestly bless okay um, it was running at 90 so it did it sound like a vacuum cleaner um, but this is running much better than, than what it was running before so uh, I really hope this video has helped anybody that had the same issue that I was having I know it can be quite annoying having a fan running in the background when it's not even touching your face I mean so how can you benefit from it um, if you like this video please um, give me a like if you want <laughs> And uh, if you would really like to show your appreciation, do head over to my Facebook page and like me there because I do use Facebook quite a lot, um, a lot more than what I do use my YouTube account and like I post things here and there. So, I mean, you might find it interesting. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.